Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Noelle and today I have a very special guest for you. This is my dog, Calvin. He's been a big part of my life since 2018 when my family first adopted him and his sister, Gidget. And you might have seen this guy in a few of my posts on social media. He was also in a few of my YouTube videos, especially the week in the life with a Fitbit and that was when I was training him, first potty training him. Now Calvin is a Shih Tzu but I keep his hair purposely short. His hair is kind of curly and when it grows longer than this, its current state, he tends to puff up and the hair goes in different directions. He looks kind of scruffy and it makes me look like I don't take care of him. So say hi, Calvin. Say hi. <laughs> he looks like a really grumpy little boy -o, but I think that he's the sweetest dog that I've ever had. My family has always had a dog to guard the house. You know, like the Asong Pinoy's, and then later on we had a Dalmatian, a Labrador Retriever, a cross between a German Shepherd and a Dalmatian but we've never really had like a dog as a pet someone who lives in the house with us um, all the previous dogs lived outdoors in dog houses and they were there to guard the property they weren't really considered as members of the family so to speak with Calvin that relationship changed because living in this condo versus living in a house like we did before we can't really have big dogs and we have to have the dogs living with us and so um, yeah that changed my entire dynamic around dogs and now I can't think of having a dog where that dog lives away from me Calvin sleeps in my room he is kind of my daily alarm clock because he tends to wake me up around 8 a.m. I don't know how he knows that it's 8 a.m., but he usually just starts um, pounding away at my bed maybe around 7.30, 7.45, leading into 8 a.m. The only reason I don't get up any earlier is that if I walk him as early as when he tries to wake me up, there are a whole lot of other dogs down in our stomping grounds, and I don't really like having encounters with stranger dogs, even though this guy is pretty friendly some of these dogs are bigger than him and so I kind of prefer to avoid any sorts of confrontations with other dogs and then after that he has breakfast I cook him his own breakfast it's a mix of ground beef oats squash and he gets a probiotic with that breakfast as well <laughs> Kind of a spoiled dog because we don't we don't give him any pre-prepared dog food and then he spends most of the day sleeping or lying down beside me when I'm working and then at night we feed him again and take him out to do his business and then we go to sleep and it's been pretty much like that for most of this pandemic period so he's never really been alone in the condo by himself with regards to personality you know you do tend to choose the dog that reflects the kind of person you are and shih tzus they're known for being intelligent but also <laughs> really low energy dogs so he th he tends to play for like five minutes and then he gets tired and takes a drink of water and that's it for him and I guess it says something about me. I'm also kind of, um, despite my reputation as somebody who loves sport and endurance, my natural inclination, which I have to fight against, is to be lazy and sleep most of the day, which is what this guy does. Sometimes I wish I could be a dog. <laughs> I've tried to take him once to a fun run it was a specific fun run for it was the run for Aspens 2019 it was one of the last few races before the pandemic descended on the world 
and we ran the 500 meters. Originally, we were just supposed to walk the 500 meters because that's the distance of the perimeter of the property we're living on. So he's used to 500 meters, but he saw everybody running and he started running too. And he finished at 500 meters really quickly. I was surprised. I had to chase him because he ran so fast. And I was so proud of this boy. Then he spent the rest of the day sleeping. <laughs> when we adopted Calvin and his sister, it was just because um, our family friend who owns a whole bunch of Shih Tzus had a new litter and she said, hey, I'm not selling my dogs, but if any of you want to have a dog, want to take care of a dog, then go right ahead. Calvin was the last of that litter to be homed or rehomed because initially they were supposed to keep him. Suddenly, we were supposed to go pick him up. We originally thought that he was a female like his sister, Gidget, who we had picked up two, three weeks prior. When we arrived to take him home, it's like, it's a boy. And so the name that I had prepared for him didn't fit because it was supposed to, be, it was a girl's name. So how did you become Calvin Klein? And that's his name, Calvin Klein. Remember that scene in Back to the Future where Marty McFly goes back to the past and his mother mistakes him for Calvin Klein because that's the name on the brief? That's one of the reasons why we called him Calvin Klein, a case of mistaken identity, but also because um, his other siblings, um, not really of the same litter, but from the same um, source, from the same family, they were all named after designers. So he had, uh, he has a cousin named Coco Chanel and uh, another boy cousin whose name is Hugo, as in Hugo Boss. So he was supposed to be named Givenchy because he was supposed to be a she. I couldn't think of the other um, male designer names because it, it, it felt kind of weird. Like who would call their dog Yves Saint Laurent. But I call him Gucci? Kind of sounds strange. And that's why he became Calvin Klein. So he came in at a particularly emotional time for us and I was able to like channel all of my emotions towards taking care of him and fostering him and raising him to be a well-behaved boy, which he is. Although he doesn't really like being held like this for so long, he's just tolerating it for me. I've traveled with him um, several times. He's a pretty good traveler. Like, he's just quiet. He lies in his um, seat. We have a special harness that we clip him to so that he doesn't try to jump out of the seat and he's kind of relatively secure. He's a well-behaved boy. He doesn't go running off. Um, he always looks to me for a direction and he doesn't mind being on a leash for long periods of time. So. Yeah, this is such a good, good boy. Yeah. I don't know if you've been told that um, petting dogs actually relieves stress and lowers blood pressure, but look it up and see that it's kind of true and it has some studies to back it up. And so, you know, when the pandemic hit and we all had to stay home, I really do think that um, having Calvin around and just loving us and being the faithful and um, loving unconditional dog that he is it really helped us weather the pandemic for me as well I think that having some creature to take care of aside from myself it's it's pulled me out of a few um, mood spirals that I might have descended into and so I'm very grateful to this boy and I, that's why I wanted you guys to meet him because he is such a wonderful doggo. And so that's Calvin's story and my story and I just wanted to share him with all of you because he has been such a great part of my life and he will be a part of my life for many more years to come. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you next time. Maybe Calvin will see you too. Bye.